Welcome to another episode of Only Time Can Tell. I'm your host, Ken. And before we begin, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend so we can continue to grow this channel. And also, don't forget to click down below. We now have merch, so you can also help support the channel by wearing our merch. Don't forget, Only Time Can Tell, we like to celebrate the ordinary doing the extraordinary. And that brings us to my guest to the right. Rico, thank you for joining us. Thank you, nice for having me. I appreciate you for sharing your time coming out here in the nice security uniform. Yeah, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> so why don't yeah. you tell our viewers, um, who are you and where are you from? Uh, I'm Rico, I'm from, you know, Far Rock, Queens, man. I was born in Springfield, Massachusetts, but I don't know a lick of life out there. I was raised in Queens all my life, bro. And then I moved around the Tri-State area a lot, but yeah, I moved around. I, I lived in Jamaica. I've been all around this coast, man. Okay. Yeah. So, so now, what do you do? What's one of the reasons why you moved around? What do you do while oh, you're here? Other oh, than I just like to. I just wanted to see a lot of more life. You feel me? Okay. Okay. I couldn't be one of them niggas. I was just isolated to the hood. You right. know, I, right. it kills me. I, I when I see people that's from the Bronx that never left the Bronx, bro. Right. Like this world is so big, bro, right. and you you're isolated to the Bronx. Right. All you gonna know is what the Bronx show you. Yeah. yeah. You feel know me? So I just wanted to go out there. I I, I call those people the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the, the the flat earthers, or, yeah, you know. Oh, I don't want to leave the Bronx oh, because, oh, uh, yo, it's gonna drop I'll off after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna fall off the, the edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna reach the edge. Yeah. All right. So, aside from doing security, yeah, what, 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 I, I'll be doing comedy. I do comedy right now. I just started comedy. I'm a year in right now. A year in. Yeah. How that? How that even start out? How do you even? Because see, here's the thing. I always. I'm always impressed by someone who decides to try their hand in comedy because there's kind of no rule book with it. There's mm. no school or whatever. Right? Yeah. So, you know, it's strictly an art form, strictly talent. What made you decide, all right, you know what? Let me try my hand in this. Um, I'm gonna keep it funky. I was tired of doing that shit for free. You know what I mean? Okay. I was tired of everybody, all my friends pretty much influenced me into it. Like, it was like, yo, damn, Rick, you should do stand up, bro. Like, the way I be having them dying with just simple situations and conversations, you feel right. me? Right. Like, they was like, yo, you should do that shit. You should do that shit. So, I just jumped right. out the window with it. Yeah. So, so how'd you, how'd you get started? Like, um, actually, I met, I met Jamie, shout out to Comedy in Harlem, Jamie and Nikki, Nikki okay. Sunshine, right? Right. And I would talk to Jamie and them, and I have dub laughing, and he was like, you know, I got a comedy club. That's my comedy club, but where my first site was. Right. So he was like, yo, you should come by, check it out, you know? Okay. And if you want to, I'll try to get you on stage. So I used to be out there on the clock, you know? Right, right. <laughs> just watch it, do his shit, you know, and just start slowly step out. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, yo, so you just basically got your start. Um, what was that like? Man? Oh, man, that was... It was nerve wracking. At first, it wasn't too bad because I went on a day where it was a little crowd, you okay. know? Okay. So in smaller crowds, like I feel like I'd be doing a little bit better because I don't got that much people to please. Right, and you, you can get personal with yeah. them or whatever. There's right. only two people in there, you know? Right, I got you. I could freak with them, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but <laughs> bigger crowds, I've been bombed a lot a couple of times. Have you, you know? Know? Yeah, of now, course. So do you have set material or do you like, Freestyling. I do. I have mad set material, but I just like to freestyle. Right. You feel me? Because I feel like the purest form of art is that that art that's not yeah, just being in the yeah, moment. Yeah. 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 And it's funny because I remember I forgot what comedian I heard say this, but he was saying that he the only time he falls back on his material is when he's like bombing. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So kind of similar to what yeah, you said. Yeah, that's exactly. He's basically yep. just freestyling, just going off of the vibe, current events or whatever. Yep. And if he finds that that's not working, he falls. He's like, all right, I me, mean, all right. Why did the chicken cross the road? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that part, yeah. Yeah, you know. So you, you find that that's been working for you as well. Of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Better. So now you said you've been doing it for about a year. Like, what's the pay been like you know, for an upcoming comedian? I mean. In the beginning, I'm going to keep it funky. I know comics has been doing it for years. Never got a, a dollar off of it. You know what I mean? Right. I got my first little pay at like 
six months in. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And even though it wasn't that big, it was still, it was only like twenty dollars, right. twenty five dollars the max I ever got from the shit. But it's still like twenty five dollars for like what five minutes? Yeah, that's what I was about six to say. Six minutes. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Five six minutes. Yeah. Twenty five dollars. And, well, and and did you get like a good reception? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, of course. Like my my goal when I go into comedy is like all right. It, mind you, it's still my first year. I'm still only a year in. Like, right. I'm I'm not coming in it expecting to be a great already. Okay. You feel me? But my goal is if I make at least two, three people out that crowd laugh, right. his influence is like, is keeps me going. All right, so that's interesting. Why wouldn't you go into it being a great? Um, no, I want to be a great. I'm just not, you know, you don't just come in and become great. No. You don't yeah, come, yeah. In, right. come in with greatness. Yeah. I guess my question is why not? Huh? Oh, because you know, you got to crawl before you run. Right. You, know I mean? you got to crawl before you walk. You know what I mean? Something is, I don't know all the rules and all the politics behind it yet. You know what I mean? Right. All the fundamentals with the comedy. Like, right. there's still certain times where certain jokes, I need to keep a certain crowd, you know? Okay. okay. I gotta fill out the crowd too. You gotta, there's a lot involved in it. Like right. a lot of technicalities and stuff. Like, right. you gotta, yeah. Awesome. Know when to drop a nice bomb, or like right. a nice banger and right. stuff like that. So, being new into the comedy uh, scene, like, is there anybody that you kind of work on there? Anybody that you study? Like, who, who are the comics that you like, that you look oh, up to? Um, I got a lot of comics that I love, bro. It's like mostly old school cats, though. It's like, I like Dave Chappelle, you know, Chris Tucker, right. them cats. I like Paul Mooney. I, it, it, go, it ranges, it right. ranges so much. There's mad comics that influenced me to do this. Right. But, but if, they, if I'm talking like people I know, like there's a couple of people like Smokey Suarez, okay. Goldie, Buddha, you feel me? Right, right. There's a couple of people, Sasha Lynn, Nikki, right. Jamie, you know, there's a couple of people that's out there right now, like that's doing their thing coming up. And they influenced me to keep going too. Like they, every time I feel like stopping, they like, yo, for what, bro? Right. You dope, like, you right. know? No, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, no, and that's what I, I guess I was trying to get a better understanding about, mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you figure you want to go into anything, like you just said, you want to go into anything, kind of like feeling like you're you're the best, mm -hmm. whatever. whether you are or not. not that, yeah, that doesn't even oh, that's really matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like you know, I, I heard this analogy. You you don't want to go to a doctor for a heart surgery, sort of about I'm kind of alright. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like now you want to go to the, oh this is what you need, yo I got, I got you. Yeah, yeah, I'm the best at uh -huh. it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's gonna make you feel easy, whatever. You know, and and, and I would imagine, like I said, with this, the same art form, the come the come the comic art form, mm -hmm. you definitely want to go in there like yo I'm gonna tear this place down. Oh yeah, even if I don't. No, yeah, you that's know? my personality though. I'm always been I've always been a confident but you know i was just cocky and confident right right but i'm just looking at the reality of the fact like i know like at this point now i do got the potential i i, I know i'm gonna be a great right you feel me okay ain't nobody gonna tell me now nah, i'm gonna be a great you feel me right i'm already great right you feel me but like i said like, i'm reality I'm just, didn't yeah, catch up yeah, yeah. Didn't catch up with the dream yeah. being in the comedy game do you know the difference between a fan and a follower Oh yeah. Can you break that down for our viewers? All right. You know, in my eyes, a fan is way more, a, a fan is permanent. Okay. A follower is always going to be temporary. Right. You feel me? A follower just going to be around on the stuff you post online right. or, you know, little stuff that get hype. When your name get hype, they're going to follow the bandwagon. Right. You feel me? A fan is a person that they saw you from the beginning and they was like, you know what? I like him. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna always support him. him. Yeah. Right, right. A fan gonna ride with you when you up, down, low, whatever. You feel me? A follower that that follower could be gone when you do something wrong. You feel me? A follower could change up on you. Right. So and and, and that's funny because that that brings me up to the next question. Since we're in the the digital age, the information age, whatever, you know, 
you don't necessarily, for as a comedian, you don't even necessarily have to get your following now by going out on stage. Mm -hmm. Like Andy did the video on like social media or whatever. Is that have you tried your hand at that? That's the only place right now in my in, in my career. Like I'm slacking right now. And I got a whole team of people that like, I could call upon to, right. to start doing these videos and stuff. It's just like life's still kicking in. Everybody, right. we don't our schedules don't match up right. a lot of the time. And I got boys that's doing other stuff too. I was trying to do music before this. I was always rapping before that. So a lot of my technical people still doing that music. Right. right. Okay. Uh, I, I rapping, man. You just an artist on all areas, all, all around. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Someone was to put your face on a flyer, on a flyer. Mm -hmm. How many people you think would come out to support your show? I know for sure. I'm gonna get like at least three people, guaranteed. Definitely three fans. gonna come. Yeah, three fans definitely gonna come. Definitely gonna come. And they, these are three fans that they're gonna support the spot, and they're gonna spend money, and they got a good fan base too, a good like following themselves. Like I said, I got music friends, so. When they come through and they be like, yo, check my mans out. Right. They make sure people check you out. Right. And you gonna get checked out. Yeah, they're gonna pull up too and they're gonna support. Okay. All right. All right, so you figure you'll get support from your fans or whatever. Um, as a young comic or whatever, do you feel like there's any pitfalls to uh, being a comic in New York City? Of course, because number one, you're gonna have to pay to, to get your name out there. You feel me? Pay $5 and do certain little mics, and then you don't wanna go up there and then bomb, and then these people that in that show or whatever, they, they they there, and then they see you in the next show, and they be like, oh yeah, nah, he's trash. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's trash, for real, right. tell you. So it costs money, and you don't wanna feel like you wasted that money, number number two, you know what I mean? And then this this comic politics. Okay. There's a thing like comic politics that's, it's weird. It's a funny business, man. Right. It's a funny business, but it's okay. I don't get too caught up in that. Right. There's even politics even at, at, the, at the entry level or whatever? Oh, like, I can understand at the higher levels, but even at the entry level? Of course, of course. Like, you go to, like, I, I, you, I have spots that I used to go to, you feel me, on a regular, like, and now that I go to other spots, like, I know it's not like nothing personal, but the people will still look at that, like, the people that put me on to those spots, right. and they'll still be like, oh, he, he don't mess with me no more, nothing like that. Right, right. But it ain't even like that, you know, I just be busy, and I'm trying to get it in where I fit in, you feel me? Right. I'm not... I don't got time to be wasting. <laughs> so then, so do you feel that there's like a certain type of loyalty or like, you know, Yep. Like, like this person ain't messing with you, so I'm not messing with you. It's not really like that. You know what I think it is? It's like they don't want to give upcoming, a lot of places don't want to give upcoming comics a chance. You feel me? Which is bizarre, right? Because yeah, it's, like, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird yeah. as hell because it's like, who knows, bro? Like, right. you feel know I me? Mean? Yeah, exactly. Over your, your, your faith, I could probably go up there and kill, you feel me? Right. And then they 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 say little things like to try to cut you down. It's probably just comics being comics, but still, like, you know, it, it'll be making you feel a type of way. Like, sometimes, and you can't have feelings in this business. Right. You got to yeah. eliminate those feelings. It's like, it's like the drug game in a way sometimes. <laughs> like, you, you got to eliminate those feelings. You right, got to right. go in there just knowing like, yo, you do what you do. Right. Don't care what nobody say about you. That, that's where my confidence come back into right. play. You feel me? So now that leads into my next question. Has there ever been a time where you were performing a set and you bomb? Oh, Boys. How did you handle that? Oh, man. Man. What, what did you take away from that? Because I don't, you know, we at this show, we don't believe in failure. Uh -huh. We believe everything is a lesson. Yeah. You know, so what did you... And that's how I look at all of all of my missteps, all my mishaps in life. Real dudes, we don't never lose. Right. We only learn. And the only time you lose is when you don't do, do anything. Do it at anything. Thank right. you. That's the right. only time you lose. Right. Losing is a, is a losing is a mentality right. that we force upon ourselves. Right. You feel I me? Mean? Right. When we don't choose to do what we know we can do. Right. You feel I me? Mean? When we sit there and just sit on it instead of using the gift that God gave you. You right. feel I me? Mean? That's you. when you really lose to me. Right. In life, anytime I go up there and I do bomb, you know what I take away? I take away. All right, boom. I probably should have said different jokes. Okay. 
I probably wasn't feeling the crowd like I, sh I normally should do. Right. I probably should spit a couple of writings, you know? Right. I should have worked more. I should have okay. gave them the better me. But right. I'm still, like I said, I'm just a year in, so I'm right. still getting over a little stage fright every now and then it oh, comes so you, back. Yeah, you have stage fright even now? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, once that mic comes in my hand, even though I know what I want to do, and I, I sometimes I have a whole list of things to say, right. but as soon as that mic come in my hand, boy, sometimes it's like, boom clear right right <laughs> it's like right, clear right, mind yeah. new rico again <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. am i doing here yeah uh, <laughs> why y'all looking at me like that <laughs> right yeah all right so do you find that you perform better in mainstream rooms or urban you know what i find i do great both it all depends on the feelings I'm having before I go in there, you know? Like the type of people I'm kicking it with before, it's, it's all an energy thing with me. Because right. as a true artist, especially what I do is mainly energy, you feel know I me? Mean? Right. I have to be around positive energy, great energy. I gotta get energy from the room, right. you know? Any type of energy, that's that's what I feed off of. Well, and, and the reason why I ask, because I know, you know, just a few comedy clubs that I've been to, it, it seemed like in the urban room, you have people more, it seems like the audience has more of a chip on the shoulder, like, like you, you can't make me laugh. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you coming in here with that type of energy? Whereas in the mainstream room, it just seems like people are just out to have a good time. Yeah. So it's yep. just like... Yeah, I know. I know that's how it is performing for comics, okay. as a matter of fact. That's how it is. Comics, bro, I done sat there and I done seen people squeeze in laughs right do they best to not laugh at a joke bro right and they and i'm sitting there looking i'm like yo bro you know you want to laugh bro. Funny. it's right. funny yeah right, right. you know you want to laugh but just for, for them not to give that other comic that gratification right <clears throat> they, they <clears throat> suck up the laugh and shit i'm like bro i should punch you in the chest <laughs> force that laugh out of them <laughs> And, and I, I don't know if you've experienced it, but ha have you ever had anything or seen something or experienced something where, um, you know, somebody, a fellow comedian might have been like, yeah, that, that joke, don't tell that joke or whatever. Oh, and oh, then they go out and tell that <laughs> And you're all like, yo, the, bro. <laughs> all the, you know what, what it was so, why I, I used to be mad and I don't want, I ain't want to write jokes. There were certain things, all right, there are certain things even just coming into comedy where it's like, I, I, I do great at telling stories right. in my comedy, you feel me? Right. So I be telling people a lot of stuff, a lot of my personal life, you feel me? Right. One of the, I came in with one of the first sets I ever did was I put it on blast about me and therapy and with my therapist, you understand? Right. There was a couple of comics around that I seen that was, that was there at the time, you know? And it's all good and whatnot, but I was just talking about this yesterday as a matter of fact, but it's crazy because I said a joke about my therapist, even though other com, and then I see a comic do the same shit right after. Right. You feel me? Do the same shit right after. And at the same time, like, you know what? It don't hurt me none because everything in life is recycled. Right. I feel like. Yeah. Every topic that we could talk, there's but so much stuff that's happening. You right. feel me? Right. Everything we talk about is recycled talk topics. The most relatable stuff right. has all been said already. All, all it is, is like, you know, I just respect where I hear from and I just give my peace. You right. know, if I influence somebody else, I influence them. They right. my sons, you understand? Right. I don't let it take me down or nothing. Right. This is obvious I'm doing something good right. to the point where they trying to be like me. You, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, they said uh, 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 one of the highest forms of flattery is imitation. Yep. Right. right, I got you. That's a good perspective. That's mm -hmm. a good perspective. All right, so all right, what do you think? it would take for Rico to get to the next level. Oh man, just support, man. Keep going out and doing shows. Right. That's all. Consistency. Yeah, consistency, right. yeah. yeah. Don't give up. Right. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they say, yo, you put 10,000 hours into anything, you mm -hmm. become an expert, and now we have to Of course. Of course. Um, I think of what? I'm five hours in, so I. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got nine thousand yeah. <laughs> You already know, player. We do this all the time. All right, so all right, I asked you about what you would do to take me to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any um anything coming up, any upcoming projects? I ain't been booked yet, 
which I'm kind of mad at, cause you know, I'm starting to come out and look for you, motherfuckers. <laughs> nah, but <laughs> well, it's summer too, so you <laughs> yeah. know things that you know. But nah, I got a regular. I got a, a couple of shows that I'm regularly on, like Tito's on Wednesdays. I'm always there. I'm gonna start going back to comedy in Harlem, supporting Sasha Lynn show right. and they Monday night shows. I just I used to be out there, out there and going to like regular spots, but I ain't booked nothing booked. But I'm working on something that I'm gonna open up myself. You okay. feel me? Right. And have my own people come in there and I'm be on the lookout for comics. But I'm just working on something right now, like a little lounge spot. Right. I'm gonna be able to talk to this man and. I got a lot of plans in the future. Okay. I'm just taking my time and working towards it. Okay. All right. So um, I also heard that one of the things that helps comedians get from point A to point B, they have like skits and stuff like that and utilize in social media. Do you have any plans? To, uh, yeah. Oh, of course. I got mad stuff that I'm working on. I even got skits wrote, written already. Right. I'm just trying to get us all together, get my little team together, and we just do this, yeah. you know, okay. and just do this and working on a, the perfect time. I just got a lot of things I'm working on at once, and I'm still trying to stay in tune with life too, you feel me? Right, I right. hear you, so. I hear you. Well, like I, I remember hearing from, uh, and I don't know if I even should be quoting it, nah, I'm quote it anyway. I remember hearing from Will Smith, um, from reading his book, that, um, his father taught him that when you want to build a wall, all you have to do is just lay that one brick as perfectly as you can. Mm -hmm. And then you lay another brick. You know, you lay another yep. brick and lay another brick. And before you know it, after you lay enough bricks, you have a wall. But if yep. you go into it with the mindset of, I'm going to build a wall, that might be too big of a task. So I say, well, I have to say what? Just lay your one brick as perfectly as you can, mm -hmm. you know, and keep laying keep, bricks. And keep laying your bricks. Yep, that's where I'm at stage at right now. Okay. <laughs> well, definitely, I appreciate yeah. your time. Thank man. you. Uh, why don't you let our viewers know where they can find you, man? Because gotcha. I, I see big things coming from you in the near future. Appreciate you. Yeah, y'all can find me at on Instagram, Rico the Loud, R I C O D A Loud, and I'm on Facebook, Rican Rico Roni. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. It's a wild thing, but yeah, that's where you can find me at. All right, man. Well, I appreciate yeah, you, man, taking you. time out from security, man. Yeah, uh, you know. already know. <laughs> Top flight in here. <laughs> well, thank you, brother. Thank you for yeah, sharing your, your, you too, your, your story, man. That's going to do it for this week of Only Time Can Tell. Um, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Also, hit below. Get that merch. You know, got bills over here. We got oh. bills. Rico costs money. Yeah, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> we out here. All right. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So you will always get an alert when a new video drops. Plus, join our website for information on all our shows, trips, and getaways. If you'd like to support the channel, you can by purchasing our new merch in the link below or go to www.whattodoent.com.